Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I'm having a hard time, it's good to have somebody I can talk to about it. My first person I talk to is my wife. I talk to my wife and I say, you know, I'm struggling with this, or, you know, I'm not having a good day in these areas, and we're just honest with each other. There's other people that I go to in this world, and a lot of them are here at this church. And I can just be honest with them and be real with them. You know, the Bible says that we're all in this together. And when we look out for one another and we're generous with our time and we're generous with our love, it says this, it strengthens our faith. Why? Because you realize I'm not in this all, all by myself. Now, how many of you ever went to a church where nobody could care less if you came or if you didn't? Anybody go like to church like that? Yeah, I don't want that to be this church, guys. You know, the, the amazing thing is that God keeps growing in this church and that people keep coming back. I'm amazed you guys come back every week. I really am. <laughs> but, but one of the things I want to encourage you guys to do is get to know the people around you. One of the ways that we say to do that here is join a small group. You've got to have a group of friends, Christian friends, who are going to love you, encourage you, and support you no matter what you face. Paul says, man, it was good of you to share, to, that you would uh, share in my troubles. Take a look at this next verse. When we're generous with each other, it proves to the world something. I want you to notice this. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9, 13, your generosity will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. You know, God commands us to be generous with each other. And when we are, the Bible says, that proves to the world that you actually are a Christian. Now, a lot of people running around in the world today that says they're followers of Christ, but they don't live like it. And I've said this a number of times. If you ever are out in the world and you're doing your own thing and you can really care less about God, please don't tell anybody you're a Christian because you're going to give the rest of us a bad name. And you drag Jesus' name in the dirt. That's just the reality of it. When we're generous, it proves to the world that we're followers of Christ. It's a pretty amazing thing to think of. You knew this or not, but, but uh, the Bible, God talks more about giving than he does about heaven or hell. Did you know that? The Bible talks more about giving and being generous than it does about heaven or hell, which is a pretty amazing thing to think about. But why would God do that? Why would the Bible talk about that? Well, because if it weren't for God's generosity, we wouldn't have anything. Amen. Think about that. Take a look up here for a second, guys. Let me, let me just run through a couple things. Did you know that you wouldn't take your next breath if it wasn't for God's generosity? Did you know that God's given you everything that you have right now because of His generosity? The things that you value, God gave that to you. Sooner or later, we're going to have to decide, is God really telling the truth? Does he really keep his promises? I want you to notice this promise he gives in 2 Corinthians 9. He says, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap generously. Now, if you don't believe that, if you don't believe that, let me encourage you to do something. Go home today, grab a pair of scissors, and cut that verse out of your Bible. Because if you don't believe it, and you don't follow it, let me just reverse that. If you don't follow it, you don't believe it. Right? The Bible says, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. You know, this is so true in a lot of areas of our life. If we give out judgment, isn't it true that people have a tendency to be judgmental about us? Amen. Yeah. You know, what we, what we sow, we're going to reap. If we're critical with other people, and we are picking at them, or nitpicking at them, isn't it true that they're critical of you? Yeah, it is true. If you gossip about other people, I guarantee it, people will gossip about you. I guarantee it, they will, because you're out there gossiping about them. If you're envious or jealous of other people, people are going to be envious and jealous of you. Why? We reap what we sow. I want you to notice this. Uh, whatever you give out, you're going to get back. If you're giving out encouragement, sowing affirmation and kindness, people are going to be affirming and encouraging to you. And that's great. If you if if you uh, so uh, if you so love, I don't even know what I wrote here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you love other people, and and you're showing love towards other people, 
more than likely they're going to show love for you back. It's just the way it is. And God says, the reason I ask you to be generous is because I want you to be more like me. I want you to be more like Jesus Christ. And the reality is, not many of us, by nature, are very generous. Isn't that true? Yes. I have to break up my kids. A lot of times they're, they're five and six, and they always use these words. Mine. Mine. <laughs> no. Stop. Right? Mine. Well, that's one of the hardest things I'm trying to do right now, is teach my kids to share. You know, when, when I look at my kids and I see that they don't share and they're fighting, it disappoints me. And when God looks at us and we're unwilling to share, I think it disappoints Him. Because we're not really being obedient to Him. I want you to notice this. What happens when we start being more generous? 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says this. God will generously provide all you need. Now I want you to underline that, circle it, put a star by it, whatever you need to do to remind you of this. God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. God says this, when you're generous, I will provide everything you need. Not only will I give you everything you need, I'll even give you a little bit more so you can help this person over here. <coughs> so the Bible says we're to be generous. I want you to look at number four. Why should we be generous? Because generosity is an investment for eternity. Generosity is an investment for eternity. Take a look at Philippians 4, 17 and 18. He, as Paul is remembering the gifts that they've given him, the Philippian church has given him, and the ones that they just brought him today, he says this, not that I am looking for a gift. He's like, I'm not really looking for a gift, guys, but I'm looking for what may be credited to your account. The gifts you sent are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. You know, the Bible says we're more generous it's like we're giving to God. You know, there's a passage in the Bible when it says, even if you give a cup of water to one of the least, least of these, these little ones, the people that may not know Christ, if you just give them a cup of water, Jesus says, it's like you gave it to me. Because you're investing for eternity. I say it a lot of times, but you're never going to see a U-Haul behind a hearse. Right? right? You're never going to see that. U-Haul pulling a hearse. Uh, I, I heard about this. I don't know if it's true, but I heard that um, mortuaries call, sell a thing called burial suits. Maybe you, you would know. I, I don't really know. But uh, these are suits that they bury people in that they don't have a suit of their own. But you want to know the big difference is? No pockets. Right. <laughs> these suits don't have any pockets. Why not? Because you don't need them. <laughs> you don't need them where you're going. Right. Every time we're generous, we make an investment for eternity. You know, you cannot take everything with you that you have, but you can send it on ahead of you. Now, let me get to, let me say what, what I mean. You may not be able to take all your money, all your clothes, all your good stuff with you, but when you invest in people who are going to heaven, you send it on ahead of you. When you invest in other people's lives, the Bible says that you are storing up for yourselves treasure in heaven. And God is going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. 